The Cardiff Devil season might be nearing an end, but for the off-ice staff, they've put out an open invitation to fans to come and ask any pressing questions they might have about the club at a fan forum. I want tonight to be like a positive night. Like I don't want, yeah. I don't want fans to think like, I don't want it to be like them ask a question and then we go, well, we, we did it this way because of this and like be very defensive. Like I think, I think you want people to be able to ask questions and be comfortable. And I think like, I think, you know, if I'm being honest, I'll address that. Like I'll say that at the start, feel free to ask questions. Don't be like, don't be worried what we're going to think. Don't be worried about everyone in the room. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for coming. I don't even... We'll, we'll need it. It's because you guys at the back are scared to sit near the front, aren't you? So I, I think we're past the logo. I think it'll be more things like cease ticket prices. Um, the food, the parking. The food, the parking. Things, it seems the arena that like we're already addressing that will, like, you know, stuff we have planned for. But I think it's just, rather than people complain and complain and complain on social media, this is us saying, like, just ask us. The reason why we're doing this is not it isn't reactive to something that we saw or anything. We just feel like it's about time we have, like, a public forum for you guys to ask the question. And if you don't mind, when you do ask a question, if you just stand up, give your full name, your Twitter handle, and your <laughs> Inferno uh, reference, if that's okay. All right? And then we'll just write it down and keep track of what you said and hold it against you. Top of the agenda, parking. What gives the swimming pool and the authority to put up marshals when the car parks for both facilities are owned by the council? There's a big improvement at the moment on the screen. You know? so when we come, when we come in here for a beer in between periods, you can see the scores around the league. It's telling you how many minutes you've got before you need to go back in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, no, no. Get a drink. Yeah. Because you want to miss the crowd. That's basically why we did it, right? Yeah. So that you can come in. Yeah. Yeah. It is good. Also, you've had talk with the coach after the games. Yeah. Just did one. Yeah, do you want to know why? Because yeah. he came up here and he said, they asked a couple questions and and he said the whole room was talking and nobody could even hear what he said and nobody was listening. So he said, I'm not doing that again. He speaks to some stuff with our sponsors. There's no reason why I couldn't be with the fans do it and even with the coach. Like, I, know, like, I talked to Lordo and he said they'll do like once a month, they'll do like a coach's catch up in a bar and, and fans can come and just listen and it goes really well. So maybe that's something new. It'd be good to use it as like season ticket holder event. So it encourages people to get season tickets as well with that sort of like, even if it's like every couple of months or like a quarterly round up. Yeah, I, th I, thought, I thought the fan forum was good. Uh, I, th I think it's important to do events like that. We probably don't do enough of them anymore. We used to be, we used to do a lot of like um, pregame chats, Franny and me. You know, usually when the orders are in town, we'll, they'll do something with the fans. Green and I uh, both wanted to kind of address a few things that the, that the fans have been not really talking to us about, more like complaining about on social media or on forums. And, and you know, it was an opportunity for people to ask questions. Um, if, if I'm being honest, not not the toughest questions were asked, so we tried to bring them up and then talk about them. But I think I think sometimes you just need to you just need to be seen as as listening to your fan base, and and it might not be, you know, it, it, you don't have to do it all the time, but it has to be genuine. You have to give your time. Like I mean, we were there for probably three hours, three and a half hours, and and there's probably I don't know 70 people that ask questions, and and um, I thought it was good. I think, you know, like I said, I think in the future we'll do more of it. I think we should do one d definitely in the off season, but, um, but yeah, all in all, pretty good. Back on the ice, one of the biggest games of the year awaited. All season long, it's been near on impossible to catch up to the Sheffield Steelers. And with only a couple weeks left of the season, they came to town knowing that a win would secure them the league title. Come on, Roy, say, let's, keep a, hey, let's be hard, fast process. Nice to be oh, is that yep. 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 At the end of the day, they were they were going to win the league eventually, but I think we didn't want to see them do it on our home ice. If we didn't want another team, no matter who it was, you never want another team winning the league on your own ice. Um, but when we won it, those few years back, we obviously did it in Sheffield and then in Belfast. I know like those those players from those teams wanted to be very happy at all, and 
it would have uh, stung them for quite a while. It would have stung us for quite a while. 60 minutes to decide if the league title is won tonight or if the Devils will delay the celebrations. Just one week on from their Challenge Cup victory, the Steelers are on the verge of completing a league and cup double. Standing in their way are a Cardiff Devils team who know full well what it's like to be current champions on rival ice. And we're like nothing more than to stop the Steelers getting over the line tonight and spoiling the party. Here we go, the puck is dropped and definitely will take that under control across the saucerman. Throws it in, Winfield deals with that, no fuss at all. And there's only an early penalty here. An early power play and the Devils think they've struck. Protesting, the Devils celebrate. They may have just got the go-ahead goal. Uh, eyes on the puck there from Crandall. Crandall never enters the crease. Cody Donahue's early goal would be washed out on review, however, with the officials deeming Justin Crandall's move interfered with Steelers goalie Matt Greenfield. With one goal disallowed, the closest anyone came to opening the scoring in the first period came at the other end of the ice. But as Ben Bowers lost track of the puck. The Steelers shot wide despite the open net. I never lie. Tommy, when you're going, you're the best hockey team in the league. It was the whole period. She had some chances in the PD, which was a penalty. But the bottom line is, you're, you're controlling the game because you're committed to a full check, you're committed to defense, and you're one battle but pushing you back and when you play fast and rolling you can't deal with you and your neutral zone is fantastic and your changes are good as well you're doing a lot of really good things let's bear down and draws it's five and five then zero chances three chances in the pp real chances it's going to happen in the pp same as we got them as well but you've got to stay committed they're going to push a little bit more here boys you would expect it but you know what i think you're on tonight boys i've got a really good feeling i think everybody's going Limiting turnovers. The bench is good. Let's keep changing like we are. Coming up for the second period, the Devils took control. And when a power play opportunity came, they got straight to work. Trevor Cox. Goal! Greenfield can't hold on to this one. And Trevor Cox shoots the Devils into the lead on the power play. It's 1 0 Devils. Moments later, the puck was across the line again. But instead of the second goal of the night, it was the second goal review of the evening. And once again, it didn't go in the devil's favor. Before the period was out though, the devils would put on a fine passing display to extend the lead. Alderson needs to be careful here. Doesn't have much grace. Chance goal! Alderson does get the second and Tandy retaliated. We've got to get a bit of afters here. But the Devils celebrate. Alderson has put a second on the board. It's Devils 2, Steelers 0. Frustration crept into Sheffield. And as the period drew to a close, tempers began to flare. It's going to be a retaliation. Crawford thinks it was after the buzzer. Batch thinks it was after the buzzer. Valorant took a swing. He might go for slashing as well. I think this is probably going to take you. Yeah, bro. You got two. What about the f***ing hand after? I know. That's what I said. I'm in the shock. I just bumped into him. He's like, it's on the buzzer. Oh, we know we're getting it. You can't just suddenly start taking one guy. Coming up for the third and on the penalty kill, the Devils killed that one off, but when another kill came minutes later, it looked like the Steelers had finally opened their account. 
It's opened up, it's a chance, yes, goal! I thought that went in! That was until the goalie's best friend, The Post, made the initial stop, and after another review, it was clear that Josh Batch timed his clearance off the line to absolute perfection to keep Sheffield out. Buoyed by the stop, the Devils pressed on and found their third. Barrel. Barrel on the wraparound, rebound, goal! Jamie O'Neill puts the finishing touches on a move for the Devils, and they've raced into a 3 nothing lead here in the third period. Riley Brandt, ever known for his physicality, threw a hit a minute later, which Sam Jones and Sheffield took exception to, and once the gloves were off, there would only be one winner. Gloves off, yes, Sam Jones has got him off. Brandt's got him off, we're gonna rock and roll. Brandt with a few at right. Oh, a huge right coming back in from Jones. Brandt with a few uppercuts, we've got a frail ding-dong going on here. It's the Devils, it's the Steelers, and the shit's over the head, so the referees jump in. Riley Brandt. Geared up this Vindico Arena crowd. Things kept looking up for the hosts as the visitors just simply didn't show up on what was meant to be their big night. A lovely saucer pass from Cole Sanford, a one-time pass to the front of the net by Trevor Cox, and Joey Martin put the exclamation point on proceedings, the fourth goal and a massive 4-0 win to keep the Devils' slim chance of the league title alive, but more importantly, stop another team from lifting the trophy on their ice. Yeah, boys, I'm a bit worried about uh, the start of that. I'm more worried about the time before I so um, I think we really pulled out of the bag. No, you guys, you guys are pretty sick tonight. Not a lot for me to do out there, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Get some subtitles on that one. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. 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 This guy gives me sometimes that he's going on ice, too. From the tense midweek fixture against Sheffield to something a bit more relaxed. In late March, the Devils hosted their annual kids takeover night. Get to load them again. So the jobs, so we've got people handing out clap banners, we've got a load of people doing social media that Sarah's gonna break up into groups. Another Arlo Herbert player intro. Aubrey, we have you as player intro. So Kids Night started a few years ago when we had, I don't know if many people will remember, but we had Zach and, and Fee were working here at the time. Zach was sort of an intern and then Fee was our social media person. And we asked, we, we were doing a sort of almost like a team building thing within the, within the off ice group. And we gave them a task of coming up with an idea that we could turn into a night. And, and it was their idea. This is going back to maybe, maybe just before COVID. Um, and, and kind of like when we did it, when we planned it, it was an idea. We had no idea how much work it would be. If I'm being honest, the first year we thought, oh, there'll be like 20, 30 kids. And I think the first year there was maybe 60. Uh, last season, I think there was like 85 to 90. And then this year it was like 130. Uh, it was it was pretty nuts. You know, if, if you think like we're trying to find jobs for 130 kids, um, when on a game night there might be like 15 jobs. <laughs> so, so you're talking, you know, like eight to 10 people per job. As part of the team's kids takeover game, the club asked children to come up with a design for a special warm-up jersey. And for the winner, Dolly Gumbrell, she got a nice surprise from her favorite player, Sam Duggan, right before face-off. Honestly, it was it was my favorite night. Like, I have two kids that were part of it. Um, my my youngest, Noah, was uh, was trying to charge people for pizza when the pizza was free. So one of the parents came up to me and they said, the kid over there is charging two pounds a slice for pizza. And I looked over and it was my kid. While Todd Kalman's kids may have been busted trying to make it a little bit of extra pocket money, in the locker room, Harry Motton was tasked with reading out the starting six. Yeah, it was a big game on Wednesday. It's a big game tonight as well. Do you know what I mean? It's kids night. you got to get a room for them. Harry, what do you think? What you got for me? It's kids day. Devils don't lose on kids day. Here's, here's the starting six. Rosie. Oh! Anil. Oh! Barrow. Oh! Uh, Crawford. Oh! Oh! Bash. Oh! Yeah. 
While Kids Night is a great chance for the younger fans of the Devils to get involved with running a match night, there's still a game on, and what a game it was. A quick start as the Devils hosted the Nottingham Panthers saw the team take a 3-1 lead into the second period, but that's where things got interesting. Nottingham quickly pulled the goal back to Otto Nieminen in the second period before the teams would continue to trade blows, with a total of 12 goals scored in regulation. And as things went all the way to the shootout, Harry Martin's words rung true. The Devils don't lose on Kids Night. Justin Crandall feels like he can finish this. But he can! Justin Crandall gets the winning penalty shot. The games kept coming thick and fast in March, and none more important than a home meeting against the Belfast Giants to close out the month. Sheffield had already secured the league title, and the Devils, after Kids Night, had struggled. They lost at home to Belfast already, before an embarrassing 4 0 loss to the newly crowned champions. And as the final game of the month rolled around, a win would lock up second place for the Devils, taking the pressure off for the remaining league fixtures. A bounce back win was needed, not least to get some momentum heading into the playoffs. And once again, Pete Russell's approach is to not overcomplicate things with too many words before puck drop. Here, there. Come on, honest, hard working, the communication. Granny. Oh, yeah. Come on, Come on, Come on, boys. Come on, here, boys. Come on, third up front. We got oldies. Go. Jim. Go. Wheels. Go. Go. Crow. Go. 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 Bouncy kick. Puck down, but it doesn't get off to the best of starts. The Giants strike first. They're looking to have a late climb into second place, and when Sean Norris redirects a shot past Ben Bounds, it helps their cause. Less than 24 hours after their humiliating loss to Sheffield, though, the Devils needed to respond, and they did so through Evan Mosey, who answers back with a redirection of his own before Riley Brandt makes use of a juicy rebound to make it a one-goal game after 20 minutes. Late in the period, though, the Devils saw not one, but two men sent to the box, which usually would spell trouble being down two players, but when their penalties expired early in the second period, captain Mark Richardson blocked a shot at the perfect time, and as the puck came out of the zone, it went right into the path of Cole Sanford and Cody Donaghy, who had just left the box. The Giants did respond minutes later, though, through Greg Prince, but it took an age for the next goal to come. Despite Belfast getting the game-tying goal through Ben Lake late in the third, the point when the game went to overtime would have been enough for the Devils to secure second place. So when Trevor Cox found Marcus Crawford, it was the icing on the cake with the overtime winner. Chance! Goal! Executed in overtime, the Devils take the win! Break that. Is it alright? What are the odds, Ali? The first two periods are really good. The bounce was great the first 10 minutes. And then it settled down. We controlled the game. They're always going to have a push. But hey, that is that's all we want. Do you understand what I mean? It's just about that's all we want. Everybody pushing the right way. We had a lot of good chances. They're going to start going in. You just start looking over games again. You know what I mean? I know you played a bit of stress tonight. I get it. I put stress on you. 100% put stress on you. Right, but all I want is you to do well, and you've got to come and work hard to do well and compete. Let's learn, let's just finish the right way, and let's push forward to the end. Right? Because that's a good hockey team, boys. They're all right, that hockey team. They've been their role. And you broke them. You finished second. It's good. The club are happy. The fans are happy. And we kick on forward. Right, great job, everybody. Well done. Oh, this guy was under this skin all night. Had a big goal for us, but still. Yeah. Wow. Way to respond, boys, eh? Let's go. Let's keep a roll. Yeah! Wow. All right, boys, step in the right direction. Coxie, you're in the mixer all night. Way to go. But this guy's a horse. Game in and game out. Jim. Whoa! Yeah. 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 That actually had that bark. Yeah. I want to hear that bark. Yeah. 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 I don't know if I have one in me today, to be honest. Come on, Jim. Might be a wolf. Oh, yeah, do whatever you want. Do what you need. Oh, wolf. All right. Second place secured, the Devils will have to wait to find out who their opponent in the playoffs is as the postseason race goes right down to the wire. 
but second place, that's not enough for this team. I think yeah, we're happy to secure it now. Uh, the club's probably happy and appeal will be happy that we secured it. Um, but I think for me as an individual, and I'm sure pretty much all those guys in there are the same, like, we're not happy with second. Uh, we were here to win a league and we, we didn't achieve that. We, we had the spell with all those games in the middle where we, we fell off and then we got a bit physically and mentally fatigued and uh, we maybe should have done something different at the time to try and avoid that. But um, that you, you live and you learn. Um, and Sheffield's, you, you got to give them credit to be that good all season, stay that consistent. They didn't really fall at all. Um, uh, and that's it basically. But yeah, it's, obviously we're happy now that we secured it, but it would be much better for secure first place. Finishing second shouldn't be a disappointment but for us you know we're, we're always disappointed not winning the league you can't limp in the playoffs i know that we're already in second place and you can't move but you got to be feeling good about yourself and your game going into the playoffs because it happens quick obviously there's a big emotional game against sheffield to, to stop them from winning in our arena and then after that the games are not meaningless but you know it's it's kind of tough after that um you know to continue to play at that high standard of motivation but we need to we need to be going into the playoffs feeling good as a team, you know, continuing our good habits because playoffs is quick. It's only it could be four games, so there's no room for error. And even guys that haven't played here before have played at high levels and been in championships before. So you draw on that experience, and uh, you got to get guys to wrap their head around the fact that it is a one and done. Even the playoffs is you know in the first two games. So finishing second this year behind the Sheffield team that's probably the most dominant team in the Elite League era in, in terms of point winning percentage. Um, you know, our job is to stop in the playoffs and, and um, you know, that's what we're kind of building to. It's hard, it's hard when you're stuck in second to keep playing meaningful games and, and show up and, and, and I'm not downplaying the, the fact that I want our guys to give 100% effort every game, but we've been stuck in second for a while and uh, we're really looking forward, forward to the playoffs. It's nice to maybe have that set now. It's always the good to have the competition in games, but most importantly, it's about feeling good as a team feeling the systems are in place and uh, you know you still want to win games going into playoffs you don't want to go in losing a few and have a little bit of doubt creep in so these games are still very important and the teams are playing it's you know even more important for them so I think it'll be good to have that competitive nature still and get you ready to, to be firing on cylinders you know those are those are big games that obviously you can be nervous going into but I think we have a lot of guys that have played in these big games before a lot of guys have won championships not only here but you know, in other leagues and other teams before. So all of that experience really helps in those big games because, you know, like I mentioned, there's, there's not a lot of room for error in a, in a one game elimination.